Last time out, the Formula E guys had their first ever race of the season at the Adelaide Street Circuit, where Leon Cerna took the honours of becoming the first ever winner, whilst in DTM it was a chaotic race in mixed conditions at the Red Bull Ring, which saw Joel Hutter take his second career win. Now the DTM fraternity arrives at the famous Silverstone Circuit in the United Kingdom, where the weather just like Spielberg could have a massive part to play. Can Hutter make it two in a row, or anyone else become the first double winner of the season? Find out in this week's edition of the Feeder Series Roundup. So welcome everyone to episode 7 of the Feeder Series Roundup. Today we'll be just having a look at round 6 of the GP4 DTM Flying Championship as a result of GP2 and Formula E currently being on the break. Last time out, Joel Hunter took his second career win after what has been a tricky year for the Swiss driver, but the question is, can anyone stop him in this race? Well, let us find out, shall we? So to take us through the action after missing the last race, here is our DTM narrator, Francesco G. The famous Silverson circuit in the UK played host to round 6 of the DTM Championship. After a tricky year so far, Carlos Barton, in his home race, took pole position with Campana second and Higgs in third. Lucas Krebs made a guest appearance at this round, replacing Nicolas Zorbach, who made a guest appearance in Lucas' car at Spielberg in GP2. As traditional, with the UK, the weather will be wet to start off with, but for dry up half way into the race. At the start, Campana attempted to take the lead from Barton but got pinched on the inside and dropped to fourth behind Higgs and Kirlis, while everyone else managed to get through the first few corners safely. At Cops, Kirlis overtook Higgs on the inside to take second while his Grant overtook Campana for fourth. At the end of lap 1, Barton led from Kirlis second, Higgs third, Grant fourth, Campana fifth, Stiktov sixth, Mochan seventh and Fitzwater completes the top eight. Behind them, Renz Jans collected championship leader Edan Surman sending Surman wide at the valley. Tiktov was next to dispose of Campana and he got him on the inside at Brooklands to take fifth. Sian Byrne was running tenth until he accoplained off at Beckett's, causing him to spin and collect Xavi Peretz, forcing Bot to pit for repairs. Evan Byrne became the first retirement of the day as he went wide at turn 1 and got collected by the Audi of Darius Kowal, losing today, his front left tyre and forcing Darius to pit for repairs. Guest driver Lucas Krebs attempted to overtake Joel Utter as Stowe but ended up making contact and the pair ended up pinning into the gravel, dropping towards the back. Adam Sorman's nightmare race continued as he went off at the second part of Beckett's forcing him into a spin. Up 4 and Kirlis was on the back of Barton and went to the inside of Cops to take the lead of the race. Xavi's Paris race would get worse as he spun off at Taiwan. Renz Jans would accompany himself at the second part of packets but would have severe consequences as he hit the wall causing him to become the second retirement of the day. Three laps later and Rolla Mochan would aquaplane himself at packets but thankfully wouldn't hit the wall but it did cost him a few places. Lucas Krebs would spin again, this time at volley and with his teammate Palin Zolga. George Roke was making his way through the field and took 12 from Ibobo at Cops. Grant's chance of taking the lead in the championship went down the drain as he went off at Brooklands, forcing him into a spin and to make matter worse, he rejoined into the path of championship leader Adam Sermon, forcing them both out of the race. Maxim Tiktov and Vico Olds will collide a volley in their battle for fourth, forcing Tiktov wide and Olds into a spin. 
Rola Mochan was making a great recovery and made an incredible move on Ihoir Carpenter at Maggots to move up to fifth. But then will lose the place again when Carpenter and Campana went wide at Hunger Strait with Carpenter taking the pair at Stow to move up to fifth. The pit stop got underway with the truck starting to develop a dry line. Zachary Fitzwater was one of the first to pit and he rejoined outside the points. A lap later and the race leader Robin Kirlis pit and rejoined in third. On the same lap Mocho, Krebs and Mochan pitted as well. Two laps later and temporary race leader Carlos Barton pitted for dry tires and rejoined still behind Kirlis. Rope made another move at Cops Corner, this time on Lian Campana to move up to 4th. Lap 19 and Andy Higgs made his pit stop and he rejoined, still the, in the points. He was also joined by Ibobo and Tiktov who made their pit stops. Straight after he made his stop, Andy Higgs would spin off at Town 4, dropping him outside of the points. Lap 20 and Roke made his stop, however unlike most drivers, he pitted for wets as the conditions started to get worse. He rejoined in eighth behind Zachary Fitzwater. Lian Campana was yet to stop, but that didn't stop Carlos Barton from making a move on him to take the third place at Stowe. Sian Byrne on lap 21 and he rejoined in 14th place after his 6.5 second stop. Lap 22 and a lot of runners pitted for their wet tires including Johan Carpenter, Lian Campana and Balin Zolga with Carpenter and Campana rejoining in the points and Balins outside of it. Zachary Fitzwater miserable season continued as he spun off at the second part of Beckett's costing himself a podium. Paris' terrible race ends on lap 23 at the exit of turn 1 thanks to a puncture. George Rock was holding up a queue of cars and Ron White at turn 4 dropping two places from teammate Vigo Ols and Zolga. Ibobo would move up to 10th at the expense of Sian Byrne while a slide from Balin Zolga handed 8th back to Rock. Rola Mochan was attacking his teammate Hyoi Kampeter and made an incredible move around the outside of Stowe Corner to move up to 4th. A lap later and Sian Byrne would also made an incredible move by overtaking 4 cars at turn 3 to move up into the points. Balin Zolga would re-overtake George Rock for 9th at Brooklands while Isti Bobo in attempt to stay in front of Lucas Krebs locked up and hit the side of Lucas losing a place to Zachary Fitzwater. Ihori Carpenter would get a spot of deja vu as Vigo Holst repeated at the same at Stowe that Roland did to Ihori earlier to move up to 5th. While it's behind them, Sian Byrne made a move on the inside of Lian Campana at the same corner to move up to 7th. After losing a place to Krebs, Roke will get clipped from the rear by Zachary Fitzwater dropping further places. A lap later and Maxim Tiktov and Victory Bobo will collide at Stow, sending them both spinning into the gravel and then coincidentally after rejoining they will eat each other again a corner later sending them both wide. A lap 29 and some people pitted for wet weather tires including Mochan, Sian Byrne, Andy Higgs, Lucas Krebs, the race leader Robin Kirlis, Zachary Fitzwater, Victory Bobo, Carlos Barton and finally Maxim Tiktov. Lap 31 and the Schneider teammates Joel Utter and Victory Bobo would collide at volley sending Victor into a spin. Lian Campana's chance of taking the lead in the championship went down the drain as he spun off at the second part of Beckett's dropping him out of the points. Lap 33 and the Hoyer Carpenter pitted for a set of wet tires and he rejoined the fifth after his six and half a second top. Just in front because teammate George Rogue pitted a lap later but it was Shadel's pit stop as he was already on the wets. Balin Zolga also joined him in the pits and George Rogue rejoined 11th after his 6.3 second stop. Lap 35 and Lucas Krebs made an incredible move on Lian Campana at volley to move up into the points and then a few corners later at turn 1 Fitzwater would overtake the American for 9th and then at Brooklands, Rock would also overtake Lian to move up into the top 10. A lap later, and Rock would dispose of Fitzwater at the same corner to move up to 9th. 
Mocho nearly beamed his chance for points when he ran wide at Cops. A little bit later, Ancien Bern will accoplane off the track and spin. A few corners later, after rejoining, Krebs made a great move on him at turn 1 to move up to 7th and then a little bit later, Sian will lose the points place to Rock at Brooklands. A little bit later and Rock will replicate his teammate and Roland Mochan to make an incredible move around the side of Lucas Krebs at Stowe to move up to 7th. Campana lost a place to Higgs at the exit of Stowe and then would be hit by Cowell at volley causing Leon to run off the truck and nearly take out Andy Higgs. A few drivers making a late minute pit stop, one of them being a higher competitor who rejoined in the points after his 6.8 second stop. Next to make a last minute pit stop was Carlos Barton, a good stop answered that he was looking good for a podium finish. On the same lap, Rola Mochan pitted for his late minute pit stop and he rejoined fourth after his 7.1 second stop. On the penultimate lap, Maxim Tiktov would span off at Stowe, corner dropping a place to a Joel Utter. The last person to make a last minute pit stop was Lucas Krebs and he rejoined in 11th after his 8.8 second stop. On the final lap, George Rock overtook Michael Mocho at turn 1 to take 6th place. After 45 laps, Robin Kelis came through to become the first double winner of the season with Carlos Barton taking his first podium in second and Viggo Holtz taking his first ever DTM podium in third. Roland Mochan finally picked up his first ever points in fourth with teammate Yohoi Kampenter in fifth, George Choro and in sixth, Mark Mokcho in seventh and Sian Byrne completes the point. The five retirement in the race were Xavi Peretz, Adam Surman, Sean Grant, Ray Jans and Evan Byrne. In the driver championship Adam Surman still leads but his lead has been cut to just one point from Robin Kirlis who moves up to second thanks to his win while Sean Grant, Liam Campana and George Rock are tied with 18 points in third. A very chaotic and exciting DTM race here at Silverstone. Thank you to Francesco G for providing his voice and congratulations to Robin Keelers on becoming the first double winner of the season and getting his championship aspirations back on track. Well that is just going to do it for this week. Next week it will be a triple bill as we will be having a look at round 7 of the GP4 DTM Flying Championship at the Nürburgring Circuit in Germany, round 2 of the GP4 Formula E Flying Championship at the famous GUI Circuit for the running of the Macau e Prix, and we will also be having a look at round 3 of the GP4 GP2 Flying Championship at the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg for their Austrian Grand Prix. But until then, I've been JWF1 and I will see you all next week.